Hello everyone, this is Gary Bennett. Welcome to our fifth class um, discussing um, the chapters in our iOS Swift development book. Uh, uh, tonight we'll be discussing chapter four. Again, this is our book, uh, Swift for Absolute Beginners, available on Amazon and at your bookstore and all that good stuff. And uh, again, this is the fifth class and we're gonna be going through making decisions, programming flow and app design. And so the sections I'm gonna do on the video tonight, uh, normally I cover this chapter all in my class, it's about an hour class, just a little segment of it here on uh, program flow and making decisions in Swift. So to get started, um, I have just a simple playground app and I decided to save you the embarrassment of me typing this um, in, um, in hopes to get through it faster and make it a little bit more succinct, if I can say that word. Um, so let's go ahead and just kind of walk through how we make decisions in uh, Swift and in programming. Now, in the first part of this chapter of my book, I go through uh, what's called Boolean logic and truth tables. So that kind of helps you when you're trying to figure out how an and, an or, or an or works. So, um, We'll kind of go through the code, having to assume that you've already read that part of the book. Okay, so here we have two variables, x and y. x is equal to five, y is equal to three. I also have a Boolean variable. Booleans are true and false. This is initialized to um, true, and I do have it as a var, which means I'm gonna to wanna to change it later in another piece of code. So first of all, I wanna to look to see if x is less than y. All right, so what's x? x is five, y is three, so x is not less than, um, or so five is not less than three. So we can see here in the output of this that it executes as false, just determined to be false. All right, now let's look at another condition where x is greater than y. Is that true? Yeah, five is greater than three. That is true, we get the expected result. Now let's start compounding our if statement, something that's very common in our Swift iOS programming. So let's say we want to determine if x is greater than y and is true. That's the same thing as saying is true equal to true. That's the same thing that single Boolean condition. It's the same thing as saying that, all right? And so is x greater than y, five is greater than three, yes, and is true is equal to true. Now notice, this is the double equal for comparison. Don't use the single equal. You'll get a compiler warning or error saying, you know what, do you really wanna use the equal sign in an if statement? You certainly don't. So it's gonna help you there, but that's how you do a comparison in Swift and most programming languages. Um, so this is the and. So in order to get a true, both sides have to be equal to true. Do we have that? Yes, five is greater than three. Is true is equal to true. So we have that as true. Now let's say, let's use the not operator. So is x um, less than y, well, no, it's not. Remember, for an and bolt to be true, both sides have to evaluate to true. So that is true. And is true equal to true, not it. So it wants to look to see if this is false. So in order to get a true here, no, it doesn't. Actually, that is true. We nodded, it becomes false this side becomes false. Again, in chapter four in the book, I walk through how that works. Let's change that to an or. Okay, now remember from the chapter and your truth table, in order to get this to evaluate to true with an or, one or the other or both have to be true. So one side or the other has to be true or both sides evaluate to true. So is X less than Y? No, it's not. Is true, um, is true, and we which is evaluates to true, and we not it becomes false. Both sides are false, so we get false. But 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 what happens if we get rid of that not sign? Well, this side evaluates to true, so the condition 
comes out to true, okay? All right, let's look at looping and flow control. So let's say we wanna do a piece of code um, 10 times. Well, that could be done in a number of ways. Here we're gonna look at a for loop. So we can say for i is equal to zero, we could initialize i here with the var, or we could put it in a separate line above, I gotta comment it out, and get rid of, um, get rid of the initialization declaration of i and just have i here. So, so i is gonna start out initial, initialized to zero. And while i is less than 10, do this chunk of code. And when this chunk of code between whatever the brackets are here, it could be multiple lines, is done increment i. So the next time it goes through, i is now going to be one, because remember it started out at zero. It's then incremented to one, and we print out i. And we're gonna do that up until, if we look at the output here, up until it's nine, because if I get rid of this, um, you'll notice that when i becomes nine and it prints out nine and goes through, it gets incremented, it becomes 10. Is 10 less than 10? No, it's not, so it drops out. So you're gonna get it to go through 10 times, but because it's zero incremented, it's gonna start out at, at zero, okay, and go up to nine. All right now, if you wanted to say and include 10, you can say this. And now it's going to be executed 11 times. And if we look at the output, we get index is equal to 10. Okay, so we get 11 outputs here, starting at zero. Okay, so. Um, what happens if we want to start out at one? Okay, it's gonna go through 10 times, all right, because we're including 10. If we had it what we had before, it would still end at nine with an output at nine, like this, okay? Or we could go and do it um, 10 times and include one through 10. Okay, this is important for developers to kind of understand how, what zero index means, going up to the number but not including the number, because this can cause, this is, this can cause bugs for developers not understanding how many times it's gonna go through that loop. So I recommend you do what I just did, put this in playground and then change your from and your to and see what happens and get comfortable and see if you can determine before you do it what the output's gonna look like. Okay, is true. So let's look at a while loop. So this is known as a for loop. Let's look at a while loop. A while loop is gonna use a sentinel uh, variable in order to enter and to stay in here. So this is going to go through and say, it's going to look to see if this is evaluating to true. If this evaluates to true, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do this chunk of code and I'm going to loop back and I'm going to look to see if my sentinel variable is equal to true or value is equal to true. And it's, if it's not, it will immediately drop out. So you can see it's going to do this one time and then it's going to get changed to false and then it drops out because that's what we kind of wanted to do. If I did this, let's just um, comment this out and do something like this. Okay, now we have what's called an infinite loop. And look at this, this is going, because it never gets to false. It's just keep going through here and I never change true is val is true, I never change the value the, the value of my sentinel var val variable. So it's always gonna go through here. And you can hear the fan kicking up on my laptop because this guy's cranking through and I got go to webinar going and a dozen other things going on. So I'm gonna just see if I can stop. I may have to just kill kill it here, kill this application in order to get it to stop. But I need to change this guy, I need to actually uncomment out this line of code 
Yeah, I got Xcode just kind of grinding away now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Force quit. Oops. So that is um, that is in a summary um, conditional um, and pro program flow con control and making decisions. So take a look at chapter four. Make sure you have an idea of what truth tables are. Students ask me all the time, do I need to memorize the truth tables? You don't need to memorize them, but you need to be able to write them out in a way that you can understand it. You know, what, what is an and, what is an or, what is a nor, what is an exclusive or, and what not does a unary operator. So understand your binary and your unary. Again, take a look at chapter four and those truth tables. Have any questions, feel free to contact me either at my website or on, um, on, uh, on YouTube, and I'll be happy to answer your questions um, and if you want to talk about a topic or ask me live, feel free to uh, join us. Just uh, you can join us on GoToWebinar. It's Monday and Wednesday nights. Just go to excelme.com and then go to free videos. And you can click here to attend live and ask questions and see the schedule below. And then subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll be updated whenever I post a new video every week. Thanks for attending. Look forward to seeing you next Monday night at 530 Pacific time. Good night.